Ooh, look, another car peanut. I think I'll eat this one. Good day to you. Welcome back. Glad you're here. I know I'm glad to be here. We have a 2006 Chevrolet Silverado 2500. It's the HD 2500, three quarter ton chassis. You can tell by looking at it because it has eight lug wheels and not uh, six lug wheels. You can also tell on this body style because the hood is taller. Fun fact. Anyway, we're not here for a tour. We're here because service advisor states, the customer states that vehicle cranks and does not start. So let us crank vehicle and see if it does not start. Begin engine starting sequence now. Let's see what, uh, do we have battery power? Lights are dim, how about that? 155,844 miles on the odometer or 155,044 miles on the odometer. I can't tell. Can't tell if that's a zero or an eight. Starting the engine. Okay, cranks. Well, that's not gonna work. Popping Z hood. Oh, what do we got in here? Another six liter, an LQ4 perhaps? Six liters of displacement. Yes, this is an LQ4. Okay, so I'm suspecting that the fuel pump is inoperative. That's what it sounds like. Here, I wanna put you guys over here and I'm gonna reach in and key it on. I want you to listen for the fuel pump in there and tell me if it's coming on or not. I'm not gonna crank it, I'm just gonna bump the key on. The fuel pump should come on momentarily when the key is first turned from the off into the uh, run position. Here we go. I didn't hear it. Let's key off, key on. No, yeah, I don't hear it. That doesn't mean it's not coming on. But, uh, I'm suspecting that that's the situation. So uh, first things first, we're gonna need some electrons here. We'll use this little uh, portable jumper box device that should get us a couple cranks out of this. All right, before we head back out there, I do have a surprise for you, so don't, don't look. Here it comes. combustible materials uh, but on a serious note the reason for the spray cleaner is uh, to bring a uh, combustion gas with me so I can uh, see if this engine is capable of running and uh, by the way not sponsored I know you just saw a whole bunch of logos and whatnot that's just this just the way they were set up okay so here's how this is gonna go down we're gonna supply some power then we're gonna spray in some spray and uh, we're gonna see if the engine begins to crank and run if the engine runs even for a very brief moment, we can then conclude it is capable of running. And that will also give us more evidence that we have a fuel delivery problem. Because it may not be a fuel problem, it could be something else. And just because there is no fuel does not mean that it is a fuel pump problem. It could be lots of stuff. Now how do I turn this thing on? Power. Powering on. Oh wait, I forgot, yeah, it makes me have to have it unplugged before it turns on. It's safe. Um, you gonna work or what? I just disconnected this from the power supply. This is discouraging. All right, level two escalation larger jumper box let's try this again red is positive black is negative powering on is it gonna crank do we have power no hey look what I noticed I bet it's got a oh it didn't have a heater core leak that thing's just broken we can fix that. Uh, anyway, that's not why we're here. I need to find a uh, vacuum line or something. What do I got? Shut up. Yeah, let's just get this cover off. One way or the other, this cover's coming off today. Beep. You got me. Oh, 
come off. Well, this hasn't been removed in a while. Wow. Come here, you stuck on tube. Wow. That was brutal. All right, here, let's just uh, give this a shot of some combustible action here. It's not working. That'll do it. Should run on that briefly. Begin engine starting sequence now. And it, okay, it runs. It will run. So we have a fuel problem here. All right, first things first, let us check relays and fuses. I don't know if we have a fuel pump fuse here. Radio, SBO, da, 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 da. I should have remembered because I literally just looked at the diagram. Well, we do have a fuel pump relay. That is uh, this guy right here. The shadow's not messing us up. Right, this one. This is our guy. Here, let's pull this and uh, just check it for its basic powers and grounds and whatnot. Okay, so real quick, we've got our power coming in to power the relay. We've got our ignition signal coming in to close the relay. We've got a relay ground and then we have the output, which is, I believe that's pin 87 right there. And according to our, uh, our diagram, 87 is the output wire that goes to the pump. We're going to put this relay back in, but not all the way. See how I've got a very, very slight gap right there where I can get access to one of the pins? And I'm just kind of going to probe that pin just a little bit. And we're going to check the meter one more time. We're set to voltage. The negative is grounded. We're going to key this on and we're looking for 12 volts to show up here or battery voltage, whatever that is right now, because we want to see if the support system is trying to send power to the fuel pump. So let's key it on again. And well, we got seven volts, but that's probably what battery voltage is. Let's just uh, let's just recheck our battery voltage here. I do have the jumper box disconnected, so we are running on a dead battery. And yeah, nine volts. So yeah, seven volts key on. That's probably fine. Um, well, we need to recharge the battery. We know we've got relay action we know the ignition key is working we've got ignition one we have positive we have ground and we have output from the relay which means our problem is this relay box back it's probably a fuel pump but we need to go down there and get some access to it and uh, probe the fuel pump connector to see if power is making it to the pump or not so uh, we need to push this thing inside stand by all right so real quick before we get into all that let's do one simple little test trick here to see if this thing's gonna work Hit it with a hammer. Hmm. It ain't got no gas in it. What's going on here is if that motor in there inside of the pump is failing, a couple of uh, vibrations can get it uh, get it kind of going again. Start. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Okie dokes. We had this thing pushed into the shop from outside. It took all of us to do it because it's heavy. And uh, I want to check and make sure I'm receiving power and ground at the fuel pump. Uh, normally what I'd have to do here is pull this uh, fuel tank out. But I do believe that I can reach uh, the connectors by uh, giving the tank the uh, good old reach around treatment. Because you see if we take a look way way up there we can see the wire headed up on top of the tank that means the pump is right around this location here uh, i don't know if y'all can see up there it's kind of dark but i'm gonna try to reach in and uh get a feel for those wires i've got the i've got the lines in my hands right here these guys I'm trying to find where that uh pump is i think my hands are on it yeah, I've got a, uh, a fuel tank pressure sensor. Let's unclip that. There. 
here it comes, all right. And I can feel the, uh, the primary connector next to it. Just trying to get it, get it off right there. Yeah. Got it, I got it, I got it. That's our boy right there. Yeah, that's for our uh, fuel tank pressure sender right there. And then this one is for the uh, fuel level and the power in the ground to the pump itself. I'm gonna go check the diagram and see which one is which. And we'll probe these for power and ground with the key on and we'll see if we have power going to the pump. If we do, then we know we have a faulty pump. If we don't, then we have a circuit issue. We'll have to track that down. Okay, got the meter here and I've got it set to resistance uh, continuity with the alarm. And uh, we're gonna be checking for ground. According to the diagram, my ground wire for the pump at the connector goes straight to body ground. And uh, we're just gonna verify that right now. So I'm gonna hold my ground lead straight to body ground and then we're gonna check the wires. Now there's two black ones here and I don't know which one it is. So I'm just gonna check them both for uh, continuity to ground. All right, that one's grounded check this one too and okay they're both grounded so not worried about that next we're looking for the gray wire and I think that's pin 1 or pin a that one's right here this is gonna be our power supply wire that comes from pin 87 at the underhood fuse box where the relay was so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna climb out from under here and take the meter with us we're gonna key this on and we're looking for voltage on this meter once I key it on. All right, so let us reset this to voltage. You go right there, key on. Look at that. All right, we got battery voltage going to the pump. So we have power, ground at the pump. This confirms that this pump is faulty and it must be replaced. So as per my normal alert protocol, I'm gonna dock to take this, let everybody know and uh, well, we're gonna do it because they have to do it. Otherwise, their truck will never move again. That'd be bad. Stay tuned, it's gonna be a good video. All right, we are uh, moving forward with the fuel pump job on this silvery radar right here. Um, some of you guys might have caught earlier in the, I think it was yesterday's video. It was the blown up alternator on the Chrysler van video that uh, I had a, the arrival of said fuel pump and uh, it came all smashed in and the box was junk. I went ahead and unboxed it, and y'all saw this in the other video if you happen to catch that. If you didn't, check the links in the description below. Although the box was damaged, that the module itself uh, is unscathed. It's probably due to excellent packing material. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this guy installed. But we're not doing any of that until I get the fuel tank out of this truck. So I've got it moved over, it's set up on the lift. We're gonna go ahead and lift this up, get under it, and uh, we're gonna drop down that fuel tank. Uh, yes, I can pull the bed off of it to get to the fuel pump and I thought about doing that But the fasteners down below are uh, awfully rusty and uh, I'd, I'd really rather not risk it Plus it's got this toolbox in the back and that's extra weight And I figured it'll be faster to just drop the tank down So that's what I'm gonna do All right, let's give it a good shake down for safety real quick All right, not falling. I'd rather it fall from six inches than six feet. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a bet with myself, against myself. I, uh, I don't recall what the fuel level was on this, but uh, since it does need a fuel pump, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that Murphy's Law is in control and uh, that the fuel tank is full. All right, so first things first, uh, what we need to do is lose this uh, little protective fiberglass shield. It's bolted under the floor. Holy smokes, that was loud. He scared me. <laughs> Anyways, we bolt it onto the frame. Here, 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 four spots, and then it kind of hinges on, like right here. So let's get those bolts undone, and uh, then we'll move on to the straps and hold the tank up. Yeah, we got two here, two out back. Right, right up there. There they are. Grab it. Now watch. I'm gonna find out that since I made a bet with myself against myself, I'm gonna find out that 
There is absolutely zero fuel in this tank and they let it run dry. That would displease me. Um, Unclip. There we go. Did I miss one? No. This is silly. Come here. Why are you stuck on? Oh, there's a little bracket in the way. Parking brake cables are hanging it up. Hey, the tank looks just like the shield. How about that? So really the only thing holding these tanks in is this strap and then there's one more in the back. And then of course you've got the uh, the fill tube over here on the driver's side. We have to disconnect that next. All right, moving on over. Yeah, there's the goods. All right, moving on over. There's the goods right there. There's our fill tube, vent tube. And earlier we already disconnected the connectors from the, from the pump. So once we get the tank loose, We'll drop it down some, disconnect the fuel lines, and then we can let the tank all the way down. So this is kind of fun. The, uh, the clamp is pointing upwards, so I'm just gonna go in there with a little ratchet. Maybe. Yep. Oh, victory, this is good. more loose because when I put it back on I want this to point down so it's easier to work with there dirt tastes like old boat you know that musty boat smell all right let's get underneath of the tube so it becomes unstuck on the pipe there is not poking a hole in the rubber. Yeah, there we go. I felt it kind of rotated some. I think we got her now. Yeah. Can you come off? Yeah, it'll it will come out. Okay. Huh. Let's get back under this and get the support set up for the uh, the tank and uh, unbolt the tank. It's ready to come down. All right, post jack coming in. You go down there. Okay, what I'm gonna do is just center this jack best I can, front and rear on the tank. This visual is acceptable. We're going to make contact and then at that point I will take the straps loose. Once the straps are loose, we can start to let the jack down some. We'll keep an eye on the hose up above. And then uh, when we get the hose disconnected, we can reach in, disconnect the fuel lines and then lower the tank down as space permits. That's the plan. And catch it. All right, let's go ahead and get this strap back here first. Got the impact in my hand. There it is. And our big bolt up top. Pull that out. Socket. Mm, come out of there. Got it. There it is. Woo, hot, hot, hot. There you go. Threads are good. It was just being a bear. Okay, one more to go right here. See if this one is uh, just as non compliant as the first. Loud noises.
good. All right, so pull the straps out. Rocks falling out at me, all kinds of stuff going on here. See how that hooked in? I don't want to confuse the straps because sometimes they're different. Okay, rear strap. Come on out of there too. We don't need you. Boom. Oh, you know what? Uh, it might be a good idea to disconnect this. Yeah, I'm gonna need to remove uh doo -doo 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 phone! I need to remove the, this purge valve right here. This is a vent valve, not a purge valve. The phone is frying my brain. Because uh, that's attached to the tank, and then it is also attached to the frame and that vapor canister. And I also need to pull off this vapor line right here too. Come here. Well, what are you doing? Got it. Put that up there. Slide that guy off. Disconnect. You can stay right here. You're, that's good. All right, that's free of the tank. Now we can uh, start letting the tank down. Keep in mind, we have to watch out for uh, all the hoses and uh, lines that are up top right here. We don't want to stretch those and break them. Because the only ones that we have that are removed right now are the uh, evap lines, with the exception of this guy right here. And I think I'll have to let the tank down to get that off, I think. I don't have the phalange power to disconnect this thing by myself. Nope, gotta let her down. So let's do it. There's our valve. Little bit at a time. Okay. Yeah, it's, oh, it's got plenty of fuel in it. Feel the, I think I feel the weight. Tough to say. Down some more. All right, it's getting hung up on that side. I think it's probably the fill tube that is not fully disconnected yet. Sure is. You can see it's starting to, to stretch and the angle's coming down. So we'll just uh, help it along a little. Give it a tug, another, yeah. And we'll let it down some more. Good. All right, more down with the tank. Here it comes, a little more. The tube is still hanging it up. Look, let me just shove that in there. All right, I'm gonna need to raise this back up and get it level again. It looks like the, the fuel lines in the front are hanging it up. Uh, we're gonna go disconnect those now. So I'll show you that in, in a moment. I'm just gonna push this back up just to change the angle some, make it more favorable to disconnect uh, those fuel lines up there. All right, back up front. If we peek up, we can see the metal right there bolting onto the frame. That's not allowing this tank any uh, any way to move because it can't hinge these lines down so I've got to get these disconnected right now which is unfortunate because they're in a precarious position here see these little clips are uh, kind of a bear especially when you can't put your hand on them oh come on no worries, I'll just use some kind of a tool to help me. If I can reach. Oh, it barely, barely reaches. Yeah, 
Yeah, there we go. Now we're in business. Clips disconnected. Now, one of these is pressurized, one of them is return. I, I doubt they're pressured because the pump wasn't running, so I'm just gonna go for glory here and get it disconnected. I really hope they are not uh, full of fuel because I still have a cut on my hand and I don't want fuel in it. Not this hand, but I'm gonna have to reach in there with the other hand eventually. There's some fuel. Come on, come on, almost, come out of there. Oh, why? I can't get my hand over here because there's cross numbers in the way and it's frustrating me so bad. Yeah, there we go. That was just flashlight gravity, no worries. It's not the tank falling out, see? That was big flashlight gravity. We'll just put this uh, somewhere else. We don't need that right now. Okay, now we are disconnected more. I think I can let this down. Let's try again. Tank coming down. All right, where are we at? Attempt three, two, three, four, something like that. Tank coming down. Excuse. Yeah, the fuel is running to one side. It makes it want to tip over. No. There's still a vent tube to disconnect. Actually, there's two of them. I can't tell if they go to the tank or uh, to the evap stuff. I'll let her down a little farther. Oh, the wind blew. It wants to go the other way now. Holy smokes. Yeah, yeah, I know. Put a strap on it. Kind of hard to do with a truck in the way. So, yeah, get a hold of it, make sure I got some kind of balance here. I think I do. Let's let her down slowly. All right, tank, come on out of there. Little sketchy. Uh-oh, I can't bring the tank down any farther. I need someone to raise the car up. Um, hey Juan, can you raise this car up? Help is on the way. Yeah, just go ahead all the way up. I can't bring the tank down any farther. Ready? Yeah, just go ahead. Moving on up. Yep, you're good. Keep going. Keep her going. Yep, keep going. It's free. Yeah, a little more. Keep going. All the way. That's it, guys. Oh, what? That's it. That's it. Oh no. Yeah, what's going on, bro? All right, hang on, man. We're going to have to pick this up. Here, you grab that side. Can you get it? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's just pick it up and then kick the jack out from under it, okay? And then we'll just set it straight down. You want to do that? Ready? Yep. Go ahead. Sorry, right, guys. No. Hey, You're all right. You okay? Yeah. Here, your head. Oh, go get, go get yourself fixed. Woo! Danger. Okay, You're cool, man. It's plastic. It didn't, it didn't hurt. <laughs> I, bro, I had it, and then it moved. As soon as the jack moved, I saw your eyes get big, and I was like, it's over. It's over. Oops. Real life accident. How about that? So anyway, yeah, it fell over here. No worries. It's resilient equipment. I think he hurt his finger on something like this. He's acting like he didn't. Poor guy. 
Okay, that gets, doesn't do anything, it just sits there. All right. Anyway, here's our module. Uh, we've got to go ahead and get all this dirt out of here. And then we need to pull the ring off and then the module will come out. So first things first, let's lose our connectors that we don't need. Become unclick. These tabs are supposed to fold when you squeeze this, but they usually don't. You need to just give them some encouragement. There. All right, first things first, let's get this thing cleaned off. First, we'll break up the dirt with high pressure solvent. Then we'll come in with some more high pressure and get rid of all the dirt. What is new? Hold on. We've got the module here, tank body here. Now there's this big ring assembly that clips on and rotates. As it rotates, it slips under these little tabs right here, and that's what locks it down. Now you have to untwist it to remove it. However, that's kind of difficult to do because you just can't get the appropriate amount of force there. Now, they do make special tools that are designed to slip over this. You can put a ratchet onto them and turn it, but there's several varieties and I don't know anybody outside of a dealership setting who actually owns those tools, uh, myself included. So um, uh, what I used to do was just use a, uh, a chisel and a hammer and just set up the chisel right on uh, one of these little edges and just tap on the thing until it rotated and turned. However, using a chisel and a hammer uh, kind of caught me the third degree from a lot of viewers citing uh, safety hazards because there is a, uh, a containment vessel full of explosive fuel in there and there's potential, uh, according to some, that I could create a spark and then blow it all up, kill myself. Um, uh, which, you know, to some degree, that, that risk is there. Uh, so because of that, I am not going to use a hammer and a chisel anymore to, to remove these things. I actually found that it's fairly inefficient and there's an easier way to do it. Automatic chisel. bigger than the hole. Here's our new seal. Critical that you don't forget that. And uh, same thing with this detachable little float thing. Critical that it uh, goes back on. Otherwise, you'll go to pull it out and the fuel gauge will say empty. And there's nothing you can do about it. Do it again. Yeah, you stay 
there, right there. Usually you gotta hold these down. They won't stay down by themselves. Click. And to be clear, I said I wouldn't remove it with the chisel. I never said anything about installing it. All right, a couple little minor details here. This thing's ready to go back in. A couple click actions. All right. I need one again. We gotta pick it back up. All right, let's pull the uh, jack stand back over and we're gonna get this thing back up onto the jack. We're gonna pick it up. Juan's not gonna drop it. I dropped All right, it. Yeah, he's not, yeah. Juan's not gonna drop it. Oh, it's heavier now. What? Nobody cares. Oh, down. Yeah, we're good. All right. I think I don't. Whoa, hold on to it. Hold on to it. What we got to do is slide it back towards you a little bit. There you go. All right. I'm going to hold it. Juan, will you jump out and uh, start letting the rack down? Yeah. Oh, you don't want to go up? Uh, well, we can. No, not really. I want to bring it down some. Okay. That way I can sit in my chair. Yeah, you ready? Yeah, I'm good. Go ahead. <laughs> Just go slow, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Come on down. Keep coming. We're good. It feels good. I'm not losing it. We're good. Keep coming. Yep. Keep it coming. Still looking good. Keep going. Keep going. Keep. I don't know. All right, wait. Stop. Let me make sure everything's lined up here. Uh, we need to go. Yeah, all right. Keep coming down. Yeah, keep going. Keep it coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming. All right, you can stop. Oh, right there. We're good. All right, man, thank you. It's safe. It's secure. Can't fall out. Now I can maneuver it. Sorry if y'all's uh, view was interrupted by that little operation. Uh, we had to deal with this and I couldn't really pay attention to the camera. So anyway, this thing's gotta go a little farther forward, this direction some, and then up a little bit more, but I can use the jack to bring it up the rest of the way. So I'm gonna come around this way and push her forward and get it into that little, uh, little void right there by that cross member. And then we'll get everything hooked back up and put back together. All right, we're back at the rear of the tank. I'm going to go ahead and move the whole assembly forward some. That should be about in place, I think. That's good right there. The tank is now up high enough where it can't rock either way and then fall out. So we're, we're in good shape here. It's safe. Uh, I want to find my... My vent hose. There it is. Hose click. There we go. Here's the fill hose. Right there. Let's go ahead and get the strap set up. I want to bolt this in ASAP and get the jack out of here so we can raise this up a little higher. There it comes. That's our second strap. We're in the back. There we go. A little bit higher up. 
That's at the top. Let's get the bolts in. Mm -hmm. A little bit higher on the jack. Uh, these always suck. I need a pry bar. Oh, hit you guys in the face with my the bolt there. Not good. I'll show you what I mean when I said I need a pry bar. Watch this. We need to bend the strap to the left a little bit farther to get the bolt to line up. And the pry bar is the perfect tool to reach up there and do that for us. You can't see because my gun's in the way. There we go. Now we're cooking. Strap click. Uh, one more in the back, and this unit is secure. All right. Back up to the fuel lines again. Let's go ahead and start connecting this stuff. Wow, that one plugged itself in by mistake. Look at that. That does not go there. What? No way. How'd that happen? That's insane. Yeah, I need two hands. Seriously, how did that happen? That's not supposed to not supposed to do that. It's like a one in a million chance that that actually happened. Get out of here. Come out. Man, get out of here with this. You gotta be kidding me. Nonsense. The blue one goes over here, everyone knows that. That took uh, one minute longer than I wanted. It was supposed to take 27 seconds. It took much longer than that. Right, we've got a little, a little blue evap line over here. Doo -de doo Fail. Mm, I grow weary of these games. It's not working. Let's spin on it. Definitely in the home stretch now, everybody. This is good. Potty mouth. Woohoo! All right, we're done on this side. Let's do the uh, the fill hose over here and get those clamps on, and uh, we'll let her down and fire it up. You know, I forgot to remember that. Uh, I gotta get those electrical connections. Yeah, let me stand up in here. I'm I'm literally like standing in, in the truck. Where are those electrical connectors? Hmm. They're far away, I can't even see. Oh shnikes, what did I do with them? 
Oh, they're already on top. Hang on. Ugh. They're like right in front of me and staring right at them. There we go. Got them. All right, I got a light. Let's get back in here. Yeah, now we can see what we're trying to do. So what I'm looking for is these connectors. Can you guys see down there? I'm doing this by feel. I hope you got a visual. Maybe not. Well, anyway, I'm feeling around for the appropriate ends of these connectors. I got the big one in my hand. It's almost lined up. Can't see anything. Man, you know what? I should have just taken the bed off. That might have been easier. Oh, come on! There. They went. I had to yell at it some. And I gotta get the uh, fuel tank pressure sensor connector. That's next. That's a little easier. Got it. Okay. Here, I'm going try to stick you guys way in there and see if you can see. Check my work. Oh yeah, now you can see. That's it. Both connectors are connected. The lines are on. Everybody's good. Let's get out of here. It's kind of cramped. Nickage. Uh, a long time ago, I did a fuel pump once when I was young and, and I forgot to connect that and the guy left the shop and immediately called from the gas station because his car was leaking fuel. As he was pumping it, I was very embarrassed. Never did that again. Ooh, look, another car peanut. Think I'll eat this one? Nope. <laughs> Not eating this one, guys, sorry. Nasty. Yeah, that one was that. That was an expired peanut. I don't want that one. All right, there, a little shield. You're up. Uh, yeah, I'm doing one of these rear ones first. Oh! Three down, two to go. That's what I thought. That's the bolt there for our little bracket. Slip click. Let's, uh, let's try to do that again. Or not. Well, dang. It seems I have no choice but to do things the hard way first. It's just like my, my style. All right, Silverado, coming down. Okay, let's go see if we fixed it. All right, key on. You know, I may not have mentioned it, but I, uh, I did recharge the battery on this. Starting engine now. It lives. Excellent, no leaks. Do -do 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 -do. The phone's ringing. The phone's still ringing. All right, guys, it runs again, it lives. That's gonna be a wrap for this one, I think. Uh, I think, uh, well, this isn't going anywhere right now, so tomorrow morning I'm gonna just do an inspection on this and see if it needs anything else.
So with that being said, as always, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, you know the drill. Let me know about that by tapping tap that like button down below. If you did not enjoy this video, I'll do better next time if I can. So again, and as always, thank you for watching. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. Powering down. Pew. Goodbye, Silverado. Oh.